All right, in this last part of the talk, I just want to wrap up a little bit with some conclusions and problems and uh, future directions and so on. So as we mentioned at the very start, Bonici really is kind of a mystery. Um, and it's a mystery in part because of all of the stuff that surrounds the, the manuscript around the shady circumstances of acquisition, uh, the peculiarities around the uh, the script, the way it's both familiar enough that it looks like it should be straightforward, but at the same time has resisted all efforts at uh, decipherment and so on, and the way it drops in and out of history and uh, and so on, and the way uh, it's been subject to uh, quite hyperbolic claims around uh, the solution to the mystery and, uh, and so on. Um, we might call this the all tip and no iceberg problem. Um, and I took this quote from Nick Pelling because I think it really summarizes what makes these sorts of problems quite difficult. Um, so the most difficult thing about Voynich research is developing the chains of reasoning or developing chains of reasoning while avoiding big mistakes. So everything we need to do uh, in order to solve this manuscript uh, or make, um, make progress on the manuscript is around um, thinking about multiple sequences of uh, chains of reasoning. So uh, if this is true and this is true and this is true and this is true, then this should be true and this should be true and this should be true, etc. So we have to hold a whole bunch of things constant and um, make assumptions around them uh, in order to test other things, but we don't know if any of those other assumptions are true. Um, and so we tend to uh, have uh, issues around uh, things like confirmation bias or cashing out a hunch where we only look at the evidence in favor of our hypothesis and don't really look at the evidence against it. Um, a near enough type of um, uh, match where we uh, suspend disbelief about a whole bunch of things in order to focus on one particular aspect of the uh, of the manuscript. Um, some sort of simplistic joining of the dots. Um, so the Voynich Manuscripts uh, depicts women, the Trotula is a women's health manual, therefore the Voynich Manuscript is the Trotula. You know, that sort of join the dots type uh, type reasoning, which I think has been shown um, pretty clearly to be uh, inadequate for what we need to do. Um, some other problems involve considering only the text in isolation, uh, not in conjunction with the illustrations, or not considering the different properties of um, ciphered text and natural language um, and just assuming that they're equivalent um, or having very simplistic models of linguistic structure that might underlie the manuscript. Um, say, for instance, having a very simple grapheme sound correspondence um, and then assuming that we can straightforwardly read the phonology off the, the sound system. Uh, and then trying to match to modern standard languages rather than uh, medieval documents, which have quite a different um, uh, approach to um, standardization um, and various other things as well, which, which are very relevant for, uh, for, for thinking about how our text metrics might, uh, might behave. So what do we need in order to solve the, uh, or make progress on this problem? So more collaborative work, um, I'd say more com uh, comparative work with other manuscripts. So uh, more digital medievalists um, involved in, uh, in this sort of work. Um, I think hypothesis testing is really crucial for this sort of uh, work too. So not the long chains of reasoning, but very specific types of hypotheses that um, have very testable consequences, um, like we illustrated with the, um, with the substitution cipher or with the null cipher. So if this is a, null, uh, a cipher with nulls, what are the properties of the linguistic system we would expect and can we test them uh, independent of the particular language? Okay, so um, any suggestions of properties around character level or in cipher, word encipherment level or you know, larger document properties and so on, uh, we'd be happy to, uh, to discuss in the question period as, uh, as well. 
And so what would it take to solve this manuscript? Well, I think, first of all, a solution that's consistent with all of the facts, not just some of them. So, uh, for instance, proposing translations where there's no grammatical structure of the language. So saying it's Latin, but not having Latin grammar is really, that's not going to fly. Um, and you know, it shouldn't, it shouldn't, those sorts of solutions, we should be well beyond those sorts of potential solutions right now. Um, we need to think about plausible subject matter and plausible translations as um, a, as well. So not just um, it's a mysterious manuscript, so it doesn't. So it's plausible that it doesn't make sense. Um, we need we need more uh, more of that. Likewise, with the gibberish solutions, um, saying that there is no linguistic structure underlying this manuscript makes pretty concrete predictions about how the topic structure of the manuscript should uh, behave and should evolve. And if it doesn't, uh, if that's not something that the manuscript, not properties that the manuscript actually has, that's something that needs uh, needs an explanation. Um, we need solutions that actually deal with more than single lines. So most of the uh, hypothesized translations so far work on only very small parts of the text. Um, we need something that's consistent with the time and place. So you can't say that this is Nahuatl if the um, most plausible European influence on uh, in the uh, in the Americas dates from what after 1509, but the parchment is dated to the early 15th century, so 100 years beforehand. That's not going to fly either. Um, and finally, we need some sort of independent verification process. So there's a lot of discussion about the manuscript that says, oh, here's my solution. And of course, not everyone's going to agree with me because uh, there's a lot of ego at stake in these sorts of uh, manuscript things. So we don't need full consensus, but we do need some sort of independent way for someone who wasn't involved in the decipherment to uh, be able to replicate the assumptions and the, um, the materials of the, the proposed hypothesis. So with that, um, Luke and I would like to thank you very much. Uh, we have some uh, papers that have further references and so on uh, that are available on uh, on Lingbuzz um, and uh, there's some on Archive as well. If you want the full uh, Voynich manuscript, uh, it's at the Beinecke Library and uh, you can download it and so on. Um, I also recommend Voynichies.com for a searchable manuscript and Voynich.nu for a huge site with uh, Rene Zambogen's site with a huge number of resources on the uh, the manuscript. So thanks very much.